Hello and welcome to Share Talk. I am Bonnie Hughes. Today we are interviewing Critical Metals. It is an investment vehicle where management will use their experience and knowledge to acquire brownfield mining projects in the strategic metals sector. And here to tell us all about the company is Russell Fryer, Director. Hello, Russell, and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, Bonnie. Thanks for having me. So you put out some very important news today that you have filed a perspective to list on the standard list. Do you want to give us some details about that? Sure. It's been a, a long, almost two-year journey, uh, this Critical Metals uh, IPO that will happen next week. Uh, the FCA came out this morning and approved the prospectus, so we'll be able to make some announcements today and uh, also early next week on the first day of trading. And the journey actually started in late 2018 when um, I was in New York City and attending a small lunch with a four-star general who had just returned from Iraq and Af Afghanistan. And he'd said to us at the lunch, never in the history of the world has a number two economic power not gone to war with the number one economic power. And when I sat back and thought about that, I thought, well, maybe that's boots on the ground or tanks. But what we actually see is it's the uh, it's number two economic power, China, actually cutting off uh, supply lines and uh, supply sources of critical metals, critical materials um, uh, into the UK, into Europe, into the US. And that would hurt them economically because they wouldn't be able to participate in telecommunications expansion, uh, satellites, um, just basic economic growth. And we're actually seeing that today uh, in the news where we see that um, the Europeans and the UK and the North Americans are all now re-looking at uh, their supply sources of critical uh, metals uh, from China and trying to source their own, their own mines and their own um, supply avenues. So it's been a long haul. Um, we had Brexit to deal with. We had the uh, UK elections in December to deal with. And then, of course, COVID had put everything on hold for six months. But we uh, finally ended up getting here to um, the IPO date, which is uh, next week. And so this is what gave you the idea to form the company and put the team together. Do you want to give us some idea about the experience and knowledge of the team and how you put them together in the company? Sure. So we actually were looking for an experienced uh, CFO and administration group. So we actually hired uh, the Arana group to handle a lot of the um, UK uh, listing financial aspects of the company. And then I'd worked at Robert Fleming uh, many years ago, and I'd contacted uh, Lloyd Pengelly, who was the uh, head of metals and mining at JP Morgan uh, many years ago, and uh, brought him on board as an advisor to the board and to myself, because he has uh, immense experience as a mining engineer uh, in Africa. And then we have as a uh, non-executive director on a mission, uh, Marcus Edwards Jones, who is the uh, chairman of uh, Phoenix Copper, which is an AIM listed uh, mining company. He's fantastic. And then we have another advisor, a technical advisor, who actually is a mining person named Steve Venn, who's based in Southern Africa. And he's mined in, in about four or five different African countries. So we've got a, a great team. We have uh, some potential additions to the team that we can announce over the next uh, month or two. And uh, we look forward to um, starting uh, talks on M&A uh, after our first day of trade. So you raised some cash in order to do the standard list. And how are you planning to deploy that capital? So um, our real three main core um, avenues of investigation for M&A is uh, copper cobalt and vanadium and antimony. Um, and antimony normally is polymetallic uh, material, so it comes with gold. So uh, we've allocated a portion of uh, what we've raised for analysis and due diligence on those particular sectors. Um, we, as a cash shell or a SPAC, will have to announce an RTO and suspend, but we're going to ensure that uh, it's suspended for the least amount of time. And the idea is, is maybe to do uh, two transactions at once under one RTO. Um, therefore, it'll increase the balance sheet on a much quicker basis. And then um, once we get cash flow, because our our mantra is that you have to have capital within 12 months of, a, of an acquisition, otherwise we will uh, decline it. So we should hope to have cash flow within 12 months of our first day of trade. And so your, that is your strategy, is near-term cash flow generation from projects over exploration upside. 
And obviously acquiring these more advanced projects requires more capital. So how do you plan to fund your future acquisitions? Well, part of the capital that we raised in five pence, uh, that unit actually came with a, a 10 pence warrant, which is good for two years. So we know that <clears throat> assuming we, de we deliver on our goals and our targets, we should see an appreciation of the share price and hopefully the warrant holders will exercise their, um, their warrant uh, certificates over the next two years. So that would bring us in at least another almost 2 million pounds um, for uh, m and Then what, what could happen is, is on some of the cash flows, we might be able to debt finance some of that and we would look at that. And so we wouldn't have to dilute shareholders because we wanna keep the, uh, the share count very tight there's only 30 million shares outstanding. Um, a lot of the uh, small cap and micro cap mining stocks will have up to a billion or more shares. And uh, we don't subscribe to that thesis. We want to keep the, the share count very low. We want to keep it in um, tight hands. And then um, using some of the cash flow and the discounted cash flows, um, look to potentially uh, debt finance um, some of the uh, M&A transactions. And so you've been looking at and evaluating opportunities. How long have you been evaluating them for? Uh, and whereabouts are they? And are you anywhere close to making some acquisitions? Well, uh, so my background is engineering and I've been in the metals and mining space for over 25 years. So I have a Rolodex of uh, mines either on care and maintenance or uh, are producing but are small that uh, we can look at uh, after the first day of trade. We do not have any, we have not entered any talks uh, formalized talks um, right now because we'd have to put that into the prospectus. But certainly after the first day of trade, um, we would look to pick up the phone and start calling around to some of these potential targets. We're always on the lookout for uh, new ideas in the critical metal space, particularly in the antimony, beryllium, copper, cobalt, and cesium space. And uh, Africa, which is our target right now, has a lot of opportunities in those uh, minerals. Oh, that's excellent. It sounds like um, you've got some good organization and strategy in place to move the company forward. Um, is there anything else that you'd like the public to know about? Well, so first day of trade will be next week. Um, it is our uh, total, our goals and internal targets to uh, do an M&A transaction fairly soon afterwards. We don't have a firm timeline, but um, it's not a situation where we've raised the money and now have to go look for targets. We actually have... Um, uh, various sectors, again, antimony, beryllium, copper, cobalt, cesium, vanadium, tungsten, tantalum, titanium, and even rare earths. So we have uh, a, narrow, uh, a narrow focus and a funnel of uh, potential M&A transactions. So what we'll do then is, is we will uh, get our mine engineers and our geologists that are based down in Southern Africa to start doing due diligence on uh, some of these uh, potential transactions you know, really starting next week, um, once we get the uh, green light from the potential acquiree. And so how much cash do you have to start things off with? So we raised 800,000 pounds. There was a seed round before, so we had uh, some capital in uh, the treasury before. Um, again, you know, we're gonna look at some of the warrant exercisings. Uh, we're gonna look at if the potential target is cash flowing, we'll look at maybe a little bit of debt finance. Um, there is capital available in Southern Africa from. IDC and some of these other uh, government organizations. They want jobs. They want to see uh, economic growth in their area. Um, and so we will be able to provide some of that in Southern Africa. And so I guess your first piece of news that will be coming out after you've um, closed the listing will be eventually a M&A transaction is what investors can probably expect in the future. Well, we're going to add to the board. So, uh, you know, depending on where we think the M&A may transact is where we'll add the board members. We'd like board members that are experienced both in the UK financial industry, but also too in the metals and mining industry in Africa. So um, we're looking for a specific type of skill set. Uh, we'd like to add some non-executive directors to the uh, board. Um, we might be able to announce uh, processing agreements because you need to actually have a processing plant in order to handle some of these materials. We might be able to, uh, to announce you know, an M&A transaction here in the near future. So there'll be a, a series of transaction announcements or uh, a board edition corporate announcements here uh, in the very near term. Excellent, well, thank you very much, Russell, for joining us and we look forward to the future growth of Critical Metals and having you on again to discuss um, how things are moving forward. Thank you very much for having me, Bonnie. And thank you for joining us on ShareTalk. Have a very profitable day.